Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready for Tex Grabner Outdoors Saturday morning cartoon awesomeness. Because I have a dangerous inner child. I'm like an unesthetically pleasing character from 1930s pulp fiction. If you actually look at my primitive skills and how very good at doing some really stupid things that I am. But this, and I've made a video on them before. But this is a bolos, or bola, or however you want to pronounce it. It's made out of garage door cable, fishing sinkers, and cable clamps. And if you're wondering about the electrical tape, that's to make sure that I don't poke myself in the hands with the cable ends and make sure that it stiffens up my transition here. And it also makes sure that things don't tangle. So this basically comic book level of apocalyptic crafting. I'm conflictedly proud of some of my creations. This, on the other hand, this, this is garage door cable and amazon.com grappling hooks made into a bolos. Now if you guys are in the market for some high-end hunting ammunition between 30-06 all the way up to 505 Gibbs, check out my friends over at Aria Ballistic Engineering. They're in stock and shipping around the clock, especially if you want to take a 12 gauge and make it be able to kill a rhino. If you're looking for a discount on all your trad life supplies on orders over a hundred dollars, use the code TexGrebner in your checkout at Three Rivers Archery. That shows your support for what I do and it gives you a free shipping discount on orders over $100. And to be honest with you, I do appreciate Three Rivers Archery because while I did spend thousands of dollars with them before they ever decided to sponsor me, through everything that I've been through, they haven't cancel cultured me. So I'm pretty glad to be Johnny Karch's friend. Now, if you guys are looking for a discount on your ethics archery systems, arrow insert, outsert systems, use the code TGO10 in your checkout at ethicsarchery.com. That'll give you a 10% discount if you're looking to armor the front of your arrow. Now, in the words of Darkwing Duck, let's get dangerous. The Bola is an extremely effective force multiplier. Even in its most primitive form, it would 100% kill a man. It is so old that we actually have no idea how old it is. Mostly we have no idea how old it is because even though the design has withstood the test of time and been passed down generationally as a weapon of war and a tool of harvest, the artifacts themselves would not survive the test of time. The best way that I can define Ebola is three weights joined by cordage in a wishbone configuration that are then spun and flung at either a human or an animal to incapacitate and or kill the target. As I said, the bola is an extremely effective force multiplier. It could be spun and thrown into a flock of waterfowl. It could be used against small game if the terrain permitted. It is very possible that it would have been used as a backup weapon if you were hunting and blew a stalk on a large ungulate where the animal jumps out of its bed before you get into spear or bow range or adlatl range and you would spin out your bolos, tangle the back legs if the animal was too large to actually stun with a head and neck hit and tangle the animal up long enough for you to make up the distance and the time to get your club, your atlatl, your spear, or even your arrow into action. Human ingenuity when it comes to violence is a terribly beautiful thing. With that being said, this is purely conjecture, but I would hypothesize that it would be very possible, even probable, that with baked clay balls inside of rawhide to prevent them from shattering, with some animal or vegetable cordage linking the weights, when you braided your cordage, if you incorporated chert 
or flint or some other tool stone shards like razor wire into your bolas you could very probably actually end up hamstringing a mammoth if you wrapped a bolas with church shards in the cordage around one of the back legs and be very effective at that now on a human if you attacked the head and neck area oh it would a hundred percent kill a man even in its most primitive form now in its primitive form against an animal other than birds it would normally be used to attack the rear legs as I said if the animal was too big to actually be stunned or killed outright. I've hypothesized about the use of the bola as a still hunting weapon in case of a blown stalk. However, it is also very likely that it would have been used as a persistence hunting weapon where if you got close enough to sling it into the back legs of a large ungulate, then you would be able to make up the time and distance as the animal was tangled to get your spear, your club, your arrow, your otolotl into action. While the artifacts don't survive, the technology does survive to this very day. And the bolas is seen all over the world in varying cultures that would have had no contact with each other. It stands to reason that the bolos is so old that as a design, it predates the human expansion across the face of the world. I want you to pay close attention to the vegan carnage that you're witnessing of this grappling hook bolos essentially destroying this watermelon ripping off fruit flesh with centrifugal force now the truth is bolos may have been made out of many things if i'm irresponsibly historically speculating this grappling hook bolos might not be too historically incorrect because you could have made a bolos oh out of antler in the immortal words of Darkwing Duck, let's get dangerous. Essentially, I have taken extremely, extremely old historical technology of the human condition and updated it into an apocalyptic weapon for a possible coming dystopia. However, my use of duck decoy sinkers might not necessarily be historically inaccurate, because bolas likely would have been made out of many different things, possibly even the origin of the creation of beads. Ooh, if you were fuck. to drill primitively copper beads from copper ore nodules and use that in a bola, that would most definitely not have survived the test of time through the copper and bronze age as an artifact. But be dangerous with whatever you have to hand. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this week's episode of Tex Grabner Outdoors. Cause I know that this works, but that grappling hook bolos that's just, yeah. Yeah, I just can't be trusted with creativity. You ever hear the phrase, there but for the grace of God go I? Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm basically a Pulp Fiction character from a 1930s novel, but with the body aesthetic of a Clydesdale. So, yeah, I have a, I have a dangerous inner child. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's episode of Tex Grab Near Outdoors. As always, God bless all my sports in rural America. Join the NRA to protect your rights. Please check out my friends over at 3riversarchery.com. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tex Grab Near Outdoors. Look forward to Illinois archery season 2023. Wiley Coyote might be my spirit animal, but hunting is a visceral mystery and you never know what's going to happen on a hunt. So maybe this year I'll break the whitetail curse.